Let's now look at the general case for linear homogeneous recurrence relations, which means whether it's second or third or fourth order, this is the method that we're going to follow. So I'm going to assume that you have already watched video 8.2.2. And if you haven't, you need to watch it before you watch this video or I'm going to be going way too fast for you. So if you'll notice, these steps are exactly the same as what we did in our last video. We write the characteristic polynomial, we factor it, we determine the form, we solve for the coefficients. The bad news is that this step is going to get harder. So if you haven't had, say, college algebra in a while, or even a pre-calculus course, you might not remember how to factor um, a polynomial with four terms or five terms or six terms. So I will go through that with you in the example that we do, but if you need more practice, I will link something in the comments. The other bad news is that this is also going to be much harder. We're going to solve a system of three equations or a system of four equations, and that can be much more difficult. Now, if you've taken linear algebra, that part's going to be a little bit easier. And if you haven't, again, I will show you how to do it when we do our example. But if you need more practice, I will link something in the comments for you. So for our first example, we're going to get started the exact same way that we did before we're going to rewrite our recurrence relation so that all of our terms are on one side and we have zero on the opposite side. And we're going to do that so that we can then factor. Uh, whoops, this should be a minus 12a sub n minus three is equal to zero. So I've basically subtracted the seven, the 16, or added the 16 and subtracted the 12 uh, terms to get them to the left-hand side of the equation. Then I'm going to turn this into the characteristic polynomial. So again, I could go through the very many steps, but I know that this is a three, so that means this is going to be r to the third, seven r squared, 16 r, and 12. Now I have four terms, and this is where, again, things might get tricky because I have four terms and therefore can't factor I, uh, as easily as I did before. And I can't use the quadratic formula uh, because that's only for a quadratic and this is obviously a cubic equation. So that leads me to how do I factor a polynomial with four terms? Well, there is a method by grouping. That's not going to work here. So I'm not even going to review that with you. Um, but we can use the PQ rule. And the PQ rule says, find the factors of P, which is the last term, the constant term, and find the factors of Q, which is the coefficient in front of our very first term. And we're going to find what the possible factors are. So P, possible factors of 12, are plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus three, plus or minus four, plus or minus six, and plus or minus 12. And Q, thank God, only has plus or minus one. So sometimes it gets a little crazy when Q has several factors as well. But what this tells us is all of the different factors that could be factors of this polynomial. So I'm going to get rid of the one and the P and the Q so that it's a little bit cleaner. And then I'm going to use something called synthetic substitution. Now I typically do this on my calculator. Uh, I plug this function in to the y equals of my TI-84 plus CE that I use. Um, and then I use a function that allows me to essentially plug in a value and find the solution. So for instance, I would take P of one, which would say one cubed minus seven times one squared plus 16 times one minus 12 and find the solution. Now, what I'm looking for here is, does it equal zero or not equal zero? And in this case, it does not equal zero. So it doesn't even matter what it equals, it just matters whether or not it is equal to zero. So I'm not even gonna do the math to find out the solution. Um, and then I would find two. So again, where am I finding these numbers? I'm taking these possible values. And what I wanna do is essentially get lucky and find one that has a solution of zero. So that would be two, two cubed is eight, minus seven times two squared, that's 28, 
plus 16 times 2, that's 32, minus 12, does in fact give me 0. So what that means is that 2 is a uh, factor of this polynomial, which means this actually tells me that r minus 2 is a factor. So what I have is my r cubed minus 7r squared plus 16r minus 12 equals 0 is now going to be r minus 2 times whatever's left over. Well, how do I know what's left over? I have to use synthetic division. Again, if you're not super familiar with synthetic substitution and synthetic division, then I will link something in the comments for you to remind you of this. Uh, but hopefully my review here will be adequate for you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 2, and that's going to be my divisor. I'm going to plug it in, or I'm going to divide this polynomial, the coefficients of the original polynomial, by 2. So this is 1 r cubed, negative 7 r squared, 16 r, negative 12. Getting a 0 here tells me that when I divide, my remainder here is going to be 0. And anything left here is going to be what's left of the polynomial after I divide by r minus 2. So what we need to remember about synthetic division is anything above the line is going to be added and anything below the line is going to be multiplied. And we start off by dropping the first term straight down. So 1 is now below the line, and that tells me 2 multiplies. So I'm going to take 2 times 1, which is 2. 2 is now above the line, so I'm going to take negative 7 plus 2 to get negative 5. Negative 5 is below the line, so 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. 16 plus negative 10 is 6. 2 times 6 is 12, and negative 12 plus 12 is 0 as expected. Which tells me that once I divide this polynomial by r minus 2, I end up with r squared, and how do I know it's squared? Because it's 1 less than 3, minus 5r plus 6 is equal to 0. So this is r squared minus 5r plus 6. Now, if I were a sadist, I could continue to use the pq synthetic substitution method. I am not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, can I take r squared minus 5r plus 6 and factor that. And can I? Well, I know multiple, uh, sorry, factors of 6 that add to negative 5 are negative 2 and negative 3. So this is where I am right now, is I have r minus 2, r minus 2, r minus 3. So before I move on to the next slide, we need to talk about why we care about that. Well, just like before, I have a root of 2, a root of 2, a root of 3. What does that tell me to do? That means I'm going to plug it into my function. Let's change colors here. We have a sub n, and then I'm going to take the 2 first, so that's a times 2 to the n. And then I've got a multiple root, so that's plus b n, 2 to the n. And then I've got a different root, which means plus c times 3 to the n. So this is where we are. We have the beginnings of a solution, but in order to have the full solution, we need to now solve for a, b, and c. Now that we have our model set up, we're going to continue the same process, letting n equal 0. Uh, that we did when we had a second order linear homogeneous recurrence relation. So we're going to say if n is 0, that gives us replacing n with 0. a sub 0 is equal to a times 2 to the 0 plus b times 0 times 2 to the 0 plus c times 3 to the 0, which using a sub 0 is 1 gives me 1 is equal to a plus, this is obviously 0, plus c. And then n equals 1. a sub 1 is equal to a times 2 plus b times 1 times 2 to the first, which is 2, plus c times 3 to the first, which is 3. So replacing a1 with 2 gives me 2 is equal to 2a plus 2b 
plus 3c. And then for n equals 2, a2 is equal to a times 2 squared, which is 4, plus b times 2 times 2 squared, which is 4, plus c times 3 squared, which is 9. So that gives me 0 is equal to 4a plus 8b plus 9c. Now from here, again, you have a choice. You can certainly use substitution, and if you were to choose substitution, I would probably call this a is equal to 1 minus c and substitute that into both of these equations, which would then give you a system of two equations, and you could use substitution or elimination to solve for one and then the other, and then finally the last variable. I also want to show you how you might use a matrix to do this, uh, which is what you'll probably do if you've taken linear algebra because it will probably go a little faster for you. In a matrix, I'm going to use just the coefficients. So 1a plus 0b plus 1c is equal to 1, and 2a plus 2b plus 3c is equal to 2, and 4a plus 8b plus 9c is equal to 0. And then I'm not going to show the same kind of work I would make you show in a linear algebra course, um, just because we don't have the time or space for that. But what I'm going to do is essentially my goal is to turn my matrix into one, here, let me change colors here so we don't get confused. My matrix, I want to turn it into one, zero, zero, and then whatever the solution for A is. 0, 1, 0, the solution for B, 0, 0, 1, the solution for C. So this is my goal. And what I have now is I already have a 1 right here where I want it. So I'm going to leave this first row exactly as it is. And I'm going to focus first on getting these two zeros. So how do I get these two zeros? It's to use row operations. So again, I tell you, if you haven't taken linear algebra or throwing one more thing that you maybe do or do not remember into this is too tricky for you, please go back up here and use substitution and see that you find the same solution that I do. I'm going to go ahead and forge ahead with this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this whole first row times negative two, and then I'm going to add it to this row. Now, why am I going to do that? Because negative two times one is negative two. And if I add it to the existing two, that gives me zero right here. And that's what I want. So that's my goal. And then negative two times zero is zero plus two gives me two. And negative two times one is negative two plus three gives me one. And negative two times one is negative two plus two gives me zero. And then I'm going to do a similar process, but instead of negative two, I'm going to now choose negative four. Now, why would I choose negative four? Because again, I'm trying to make this value a zero. So negative four times one is negative four plus four is zero. Negative four times zero is zero plus eight is eight. Negative four times one is negative four plus nine is five. And negative four times one is negative four plus zero is negative four. So, so far I have the one where I want it, a zero where I want it, and a zero where I want it. I also have this zero where I want it, which is great. And I don't have a one here, but because some people really struggle with fractions, I'm not going to fix that quite yet. I could fix it, but then I'd have to deal with fractions. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to focus on getting this zero first. So how do I get a zero there? Well, the same way. Now the trick here is I want to turn this guy into a zero, but I don't want to mess with anything else that's already exactly how I want it. So anything here that's a one, a zero, a zero, and a zero, I don't want to mess with those. So how can I do that? Well, I could take this whole guy times negative four to get negative eight in that center. Negative eight plus eight is obviously going to give me zero. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep this first row exactly the same. I'm going to keep this second row for now exactly the same. And for the third row, I'm going to take negative four 
and distribute it and add it to the third row. So negative 4 times 0 is 0, plus 0 is 0. Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8, plus 8 is 0. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4, plus 5 is 1. And then negative 4 times 0 is 0, plus negative 4 is negative 4. So now you can see I have this guy is a 0, this guy is a 0, and I have this 1 where I want it. So I've actually already solved for C. And the only thing left I have to do um, is I have to deal with the fact that this is not a 1 yet, this is not a 0 yet, and this is not a 0 yet. But because this is a 1 and these guys before it are zeros, I know I'm not going to mess up anything above it by getting rid of those 1s. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus now on making these zeros. And how am I going to do that? Again, I'm going to use this last row and I'm going to take it times negative 1. And I'm going to add it to the first row and to the second row. So negative 1 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1. Negative 1 times 0 is 0, plus 0 is 0. And negative 1 times 1 is negative 1, plus 1 is 0. Negative 1 times negative 4 is positive 4, plus 1 is 5. And I'm done with my first row. Second row, negative 1 times 0, that's 0 plus 0. Negative 1 times 0 is 0 plus 2. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1, plus 1 is 0. And negative 1 times negative 4 is positive 4, plus 0 is 4. And this guy was already 0, 0, 1, negative 4. I didn't change it. So as you can see, I'm almost there. The only thing I'm missing is this 1. And all I have to do there is divide by 2, or technically multiply by 1 half, since division is not a row operation. Uh, but really, that right now, that's semantics, because that's not the focus of what we're doing. So my first row is going to stay the same, because I already have 1, 0, 0, like I want. 0, 0, 1 stays the same. And that middle one, I'm just going to divide everything by 2. And that's my solution. So... What have I accomplished? Because it seems like we started this question a long time ago, because we did. But what I have done is I now have that a is 5. So this is 5 times 2 to the n plus b is 2. So this is technically 2n 2 to the n. So just like before, we're going to add that together. So 2 to the n plus 1 times n. Let me put the n in front n times 2 to the n plus 1. And then this guy is c, so it's minus 4 times 3 to the n. This is my explicit function for finding any of the terms of the linear homogeneous recurrence relation. Up next, we're going to take a look at non-homogeneous linear recurrence relations.